We are off to a really great start in April. Welcome everybody, Brendan here, Dad Planet, another What's Sold on eBay video. I am taking you through the week of April 1st through the 7th, and I don't feature every single item that I sold throughout the week, but we're gonna take a look at 15 really interesting bolos, and I am telling you, I couldn't be more pleased with the way the month has started because it could otherwise be a very slow month for a lot of resellers, myself included. It hasn't started off that way. I'm happy with that. Let's take a look at these. Alrighty, April 1st through the 7th. 3,200 in gross, just a little over that, and then just a little under 2,200 in net sales. My selling costs down a little bit at 27%, which is wonderful. My average sales price is a little bit crazy at $69. And then quantity sold, I sold 47 items this week. This is a very, very good week. And I actually encourage you to watch all the way through because at the end, I have some items that I've just like recently sourced that I'm not gonna sell through eBay, I'm gonna explore some other selling channels um, and none of them are, well, maybe one of them is digital, like it's not gonna be a Poshmark kind of thing. But um, I want you to see those items just before we close. So keep that in mind, but this was a wonderful week of sales. So let's take a look at the 15 items. All right, so this is a Kubi under desk elliptical. I like that marketing angle, right? Where you just shove it under your desk and get your workout in even when you're sitting. Interesting. So this is the second one that I've sold in the last probably 12 months and I paid $10 for this one. And I also paid $10 for the other one. I got one at a garage sale and then I got this one at an online auction. So I had it listed for 150, I took 135. The buyer is 174.49 all in. I, even at 30 or $40, I think this is still a good buy. And I would check Marketplace and Craigslist because even though they're a little bit larger, they sell through really quickly, especially pre-owned ones. So if you want a high dollar sale, this is a good one, even though it's a little bit larger, it's easy to ship. You just, I used a very minimal amount of bubble wrap, but uh, this was a good sale. All right, so I'm three cents into this one. The cassette is called Eyes. It's from Curb Records, and if you want to entertain yourself, go to YouTube and pop Eyes Curb Records in and listen to a few of the songs. I'll tell you what, this is like straight up 90s hairband stuff. They're like a junior varsity Def Leppard, but I mean, it sounds like that time. So anyway, I got 30 bucks for this. This buyer is 33.98 all in after shipping and tax. This was a bulk buy from Goodwill that I got 300 tapes uh, for $10. This one was just dumb luck. It's like a, maybe a sightseeing telescope, something you would use for bird watching, something along those lines. I just looked it up, checked the model number, and it had some comparable sales to go on. So I listed mine at 85, waited for a little bit, and that's what it sold for. So this buyer is 102.75 all in after shipping and tax at 10 bucks. This was a great, great flip. And again, just this was nothing more than me being in the right place at the right time. I don't know much about this item other than what the sold data told me. All right, I picked this up coming off of a rolling cart at Goodwill. It's an HP desk jet. The model number is 5150. And I, isn't that the title of a Van Halen? Is that Van Halen 5150? I, do I have that right? Anyway, it was brand new open box. So I took everything out, photographed it. All the ink was still there. Everything was there and it sold relatively quickly. I had it listed for $100, but I took an offer of 70. So this buyer is 97.14 all in after shipping and tax. And this cost me $14.99. Okay, if you watched my Five Nights at Goodies video, you saw me source both of these pairs of shoes, a Zeba white and a pair of black ones. The black ones I sold for 75 and then these ones I sold for 62. The interesting thing about this shoe, and I hope that there's some people watching that were unaware that this was an actual bolo, is that there's a lip on the heel that's like hard plastic. So when you put your foot down on it, it, open, it almost opens the shoe up like a mouth and you can just slide your foot in without ever having to bend over. And so that's their marketing gimmick, which seems to be working very well for them because these sell for a very high dollar amount, both pre-owned and new. So I think these ones sold for a little less because they had a little bit of a pink smudge on the interior. I don't know if that had anything to do with it or not, but I was still happy to take an offer of 62 bucks. They cost me $4.69 and I'm pretty close to having sold everything that was in that Five Nights at Goodies video. So those were all great hauls. Okay, this is obviously a pair of cycling shoes. We are in season and CD is definitely a bolo brand when it comes to cycling shoes. So I found this at the Goodwill bin. So I'm only maybe two to $3 into it. And they sold very, very fast for full price, 50 bucks. This buyer is $70 and 21 cents all in. Again, a really, really fast sale. And I've started to look a little bit more at cycling shoes 
and spikes, which I don't normally sell, only because we have spring and summer coming. So there's gonna be a month period where I'm really looking at these hard and then that will taper off for me as well. But this was a great bolo and I look for that CD brand if you're outsourcing. Okay, so I sold this Pizel maker for $40 but it was really worth a hundred. So I got lazy and I photographed this really quickly after having picked it up, but it probably needed to be cleaned a little bit in order for me to sell it for the highest dollar amount. So if I had gotten to it and cleaned it up, it would have sold for a hundred dollars. As it stands, I took 40 in the condition that it was in and I have to be satisfied with that because it only cost me maybe six or seven dollars at the Goodwill bins. So this buyer is 56.10 all in after shipping and tax, but again, my laziness cost me $60. So if you end up finding this and you get it in a better condition than the one that I had, you probably get $100 for it. All right, if you are new to watching me, you'll see that in some of my What's Sold videos, there are patterns that I like to follow to reinforce some of the things that I've said in previous videos. And this is a good example of that. Now, I found this in store for $5.99. It's nothing special, it's just a five disc changer, but I feel like the thrift stores will overlook these items and then price them low, whereas some of like the bigger, the more obvious stuff, some of the more obvious brands, they're more apt to snipe the obvious stuff and then put those things on Shop Goodwill, like it never makes the floor. These five disc changers, they hit the floor often, and because they're underpriced, you've got an opportunity to make some good money. So Onkyo style number is DV-CP702. It's a six disc changer. Usually you see five discs, so maybe that made it a little bit more unique. It had the remote with it and I sold it for full price and the buyer is $111.94 all in after shipping and tax. Please make it a point if you're new to me and you're hearing this for the first time to look up the five disc and the six disc CD changers when you're in stores, because again, they're very undervalued by the thrift stores and you're more likely to find these priced low. Okay, I sell a lot of Echo sandals and I made this point in previous videos as well. Echo dress shoes do not hold up well. I'm hesitant to source them when I'm sourcing, I've worn them, they just, they break down fast and you don't want your buyer to have a bad buying experience. On the other hand, Echo sandals hold up incredibly well. I don't know why there's such a disparity in my experience from the sandals to the dress shoes, but it is what it is. So this was obvious because they were like pastel -y. they were in like mint, basically mint condition. So Echo off-road, multicolored, um, size nine, and these sold for full price as well. This buyer is fifty-five thirty-six all in after shipping and tax, and it cost me four dollars and sixty-nine cents at a thrift store. Olakai still continuing to sell very well for me. These I believe I found at the bins. So they were like two to three dollars, and I had them listed for forty. I took an offer of thirty-four. So this buyer is forty-seven sixty-one all in after shipping and tax. I really hope that when you folks are out sourcing at garage sales. Maybe they'll turn up in estate sale closets, but certainly at thrift stores, because I don't think thrift stores are marking these ones up yet either, that you source and list and sell this brand. It's a great brand for resale and they make a high quality product. The same Five Nights at Goodies video that I referenced earlier, I sourced these little guys as well. So Chippendale, they were 10 inch. Disney Parks, really, really cute, very clean. I sold them together, obviously. Uh, and I think I had them list, I, don't, I think I had them listed for 50 and I took an offer of 37. These went overseas. So this buyer is 82, 23 all in after shipping and tax and customs and they were a buck a piece for me. So this was another wonderful sale from that video. I only have maybe a couple of plush left from that and that's it. If you didn't know Le Creuset was a Bolo brand, now you know. This was a vintage piece that I had marked up insanely high. So I paid 80 bucks on Facebook Marketplace for it. It's very small, it's, an, it's a round, Dutch oven number 20, but the style of this one was rare. And so I shot for the stars at 500, but I ended up taking an offer of 300. I figured at 80 bucks, 300 was a wonderful deal. So this buyer is 341.13 all in, and I will take it. It was listed for quite a long time. And again, because of the style rarity and the fact that it was vintage, I priced it high and just was kind of waiting to see where it would land and eventually just ended up taking an offer. If I had waited longer, would it have sold for 400? Would it have sold for 500? I think so because I did see, although this comp doesn't exist anymore because it's over a year, that one sold for close to the 500 range, the same exact style. So 
Maybe if I had held out, I could have sold it, but I'll take the 300 bucks. This was a good sale. So two things I love about this sale. One, the fact that I found it at the bins, and two, the fact that it's Crocs. It is no longer a secret for me that Crocs sell insanely well. So these sold relatively quickly too. They probably cost me maybe two to three dollars. The style is Yukon. They were a size 13. Again, they sold really quickly. So I got full price for these at 30 bucks. This buyer is 44.66 all in, and I am like starting to really fall in love with Crocs. So for those of you that have been selling it like hotcakes, congratulations, but it's like no longer new to me. And really I'm no longer amazed at how quickly they sell. So this was a fun sale. All right, another bins find cost me maybe 40 cents. It's the Killers Hot Fuss Concert shirt from 2001. And uh, this buyer is 41.70 all in after shipping and tax. So it's made by American Apparel. The fact that I priced it at 40 was based on a previous sold comp of the same shirt. I don't know if it was the same size, um, so coming in at 40 and then selling it for 35 was not based on a price that I just picked out of a hat. It was based on sold comparables. So if you find this exact style, just know it's a 35 to $40 shirt, but at 40 cents at the bins, I mean, you really can't go wrong. This was a home run. All right, and the final one, a Duallet toaster. This was a wide slot model. It had four of them, not two. And I ended up selling this for 125. I did have it listed for 150, but I took an offer. So this buyer is 150, 40 all in after shipping and tax. And it only cost me $8 and 99 cents at a Goodwill. And I still get amazed every now and then that somebody would spend $125 on a toaster, but it is what it is. Some people just live in large, 15 more in the books. I hope you enjoyed every one of those. Before I finish up, I wanna show you a couple of things. So I sourced this recently at a Goodwill and uh, I paid $29.99 for it. So this is a, and it's made by, I think the company is Bass Industries or Bass, it's Bass something or other. They make marquee signs. So this is obviously like a wood lighted, movie poster marquee. Now I plugged it in and it works like this lights up. I didn't see these lights lighting up. So, you know, maybe that would be an issue, but this is an item that and it's very heavy, um, very solid wood. This is an item that I'm going to actually end up taking to a local um, antique dealer and I'm going to have them sell it for me. So I don't know what the like commission split is or anything like that. I have to send them the details. I actually drive there today and uh, they told me they weren't taking any walk-ins because they're swamped with the uh, with items so I have to like submit this via email but this this should be an interesting piece as far as what it's worth I'm not a hundred percent sure but it was an exciting find because it's you know different and unique and I have a feeling it'll sell for a pretty high dollar amount I just don't know what that is a couple of cool Ikea chairs you guys will probably see that in a sold video coming up here I don't have those photographed or listed and then this big table that was returned to me. I'm gonna let a local auction house, I'm sorry that it's like behind me, but I'll show you the picture of the front of it for those of you that have not been following me and were not aware of the story that comes with this desk, but I'm gonna let a local auction house run this one for me. And uh, once it is sold, I will let you know what the results were. So local auction house for the desk, and then a, an antique dealer for the movie poster marquee. A couple of interesting bolos that I wanted to share with you there. I'm gonna spend the rest of the day outside. It is beautiful out. So thank you so much for tuning in as always and smash the like button if you liked what you saw or you learned something today. And then always consider becoming a member of the Dad Planet family by hitting the subscribe button and the bell notification icon so that you know every time I upload a video to YouTube. That's it, that's all I got for you. Brennan here, Dad Planet, I'm signing off and we'll see you in the next video.